comments and stories you're about to hear may not be suitable for some. Listener discretion advised. All right now, boys and girls, we want to introduce... Please allow me to adjust my pants. Woo, woo, woo. Listen to me. Run. Run as fast as you can. I'm gonna give you what you need. Get ready for BAM Radio. Let me do it one more time. It's Radio BAM, fucking idiot. What the hell am I talking about? It's Radio BAM. And now, and now here's BAM. Here's BAM. Oh, oh, oh. All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, hey. A lot, a lot of drama uh-huh. this weekend. Drama you know, filled. A, is there background um, music anymore? Do we still do the well, background music? Well, let me just. Uh, there it goes. There it goes. I'm listening. I'm let me just say. I need to that, change um, that beat. Can you turn me up a little bit? Oh. Um, <laughs> I single-handedly saw my cousin go completely insane, and he's still, after ten days, still in a mental institution. Who, Kevy? Completely insane. Yes. <laughs> And Boof saw Mumum do the same thing. Like, Mumum was fucking manic depressive, bipolar. She was on lithium, everything in the book. Like, she would run out of the house naked, screaming at the top of her lungs, and everybody had to come and rescue her and, like, throw a blanket on her and shit. And Kevin is doing the exact same thing. Basically, is what happened was, he was working outside with my uncle Kevin, and he's the son. And uh, they were out working on the yard, mowing the lawn, whatever. And uh, Big Kevin left, and little Kevin stayed. So he was sipping on beers, he stayed overnight, whatever. Next morning, he was asking what we were doing that day, and I said that, you know the porn star Gina Lynn? Well, she's having, she's having a, a, a barbecue party. Like, he thought it was going to be like a porn party. Like, everybody's all fucking and everything, but it was just a simple barbecue with, like, <laughs> chicken and a moon bounce. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, so, it's just porn well, stars in the day off. So right. he, <laughs> he shows up, shitbag wasted, thinking that it's going to be a porn party. So every girl that walks by, he's rubbing his meat hooks all over them. Oh, and then cool. every dude that walks by, he wants to fight them. So it became to the point where I had to leave early because he was so out of control that we made it to the note by, like, I'd say midnight. And, uh... As soon as we walked in, there was this girl sitting at the bar, and she was solo. She was just by herself. So he comes up, tells her she's sexy or whatever. Then the boyfriend comes up and goes, yo, why are you hitting on my girl? He's like, how the fuck am I supposed to know it's your girl? She's sitting there alone. What, am I supposed to look around at everybody and see if she's taken? I saw a pretty girl sitting there, and I'm telling her she's pretty. Ooh, sorry, you know. So now he's getting ready to fight this dude who's kind of a local. He tells Donnie, kick this fucking dude out. Now I jump in. I'm like, he ain't going anywhere. If anybody's getting kicked out, it's going to be you because he's my cousin, and he's fucking staying. So now, dude, he got into a fight with Dunn. He got into a fight with that Cameron. He, he, him and Anthony, the bouncer, had a chokeout session uh, against some car, I poking each other's fucking yep. eyeballs out to the point where the next morning his eyeball was still crooked. He had like a Don Vito wandering eye. <laughs> who, who's, who, who, got, who got their eye poked? Both they both did. They were who, both. Who, who had the crooked eye at the end? Kevy did, but but Anthony was. I saw him in the, looking in the mirror of a car, like trying to adjust yeah. his eye too. Like they, like wow. the left arm, both of their left arms were against their necks, and the other right arm was poking each other's eyes out. Big Anthony. Yeah. Holy so, shit. Yeah. So then I I was trying to reason with everybody, like Kevy, please calm down. Like I was gonna throw a glass through the window at the note, and Jacasso stopped me and held me back. And Kevy sees Jacasso hold me back, so he wants to come up and f- fuck Jacasso up when he- we're just all together at Gina Lynn's house being friends. You know, like in Terminator, where like the guy's got a target on, you know, yeah. anyone. That's what it was from one person to the next. I, mean, I made a code word with him that was called Cincinnati. I said, "Kevy, oh, you put one in my mouth." No, 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 yeah. Yeah, Oklahoma. Said, no, no, no. He does. No, he's outside. Oklahoma. Oh, you're Oklahoma. I told Kevy Cincinnati. If I say the word Cincinnati, that means that you're out of control and you need to calm down and keep quiet. Did he, he agree goes, to this? Yeah. Then. 30 minutes goes by, he has no clue what I'm talking about. He's seeing right through me. He can't even uh, uh, comprehend Cincinnati, let alone... He, like, he didn't even know where he was. He's just trying to fuck everybody up. So, uh... So then the Hummer pulls up, tinted windows. I couldn't really tell who was in it. I thought it was Seth, but it wasn't. It so, uh, yeah. So, I chuck him in the back of the Hummer and then drive him back here. Right, uh, so I... They go back to my house, and I am... And, I'm apologizing to everybody at the note who he kind of just fucked up. <laughs> he, <laughs> he beat the shit out of everybody. Yeah, for those for those of you listeners that don't know, uh, Kevin is little Kevy is a force to be reckoned with when he's drunk. I always avoid him when he's drunk. If he's drinking, I leave the party. He's very intimidating, and he just Hannah summed him up one time and said, "Oh, little Kevy, you mean the dude who just gets drunk and wants to fight everybody?" Like. That pretty much sums him up. If he's not drinking, he's a nice kid. The but, nicest, man, you do not kind. want Host. to fuck with him. I've well, seen him knock nick- out, you know. His nickname is Prison Punch. 
<laughs> he'll yeah. st- he'll still beat the fuck out of you, sober or drunk. Yeah. Dude, I, I honestly think call his girlfriend either him or Evil Jared. Kevy is probably the toughest person that I've ever met. And I think that he wants to go back to jail. I don't think he's ready for society yet, and he feels like he needs to go back to jail, so he's just getting in any kind of trouble he possibly can till he goes back to jail. But anyway, he comes back here. I spend 20 minutes apologizing to everybody at the note. I come back in. Sean McDermott pulls up with Dave the Curtis. Oh, Lord. And Sean McDermott's intro to me is, what's up, bam? And then he taps me in the nuts, and I go, ooh, like that. Kevy yeah, sees that. Yeah. He runs from across the room, knocks Sean McDermott's lights out, and then face, he, right? Yeah, right in his fucking face. And then he kind of gets up like, whoa, and like all dizzy and shit. Yeah. And then he goes, "Don't fuck with my cousin." And then he just walks off. Uh, Jesus <laughs> Christ, <laughs> dude! It's just a combination of mixing, mixing like hard alcohol. Dude, right? I don't know, but like I know that I, think it's, I know that there's a lot of PCP in Marcus Hook, and I'm not saying that's what he <laughs> did, but maybe, just maybe. He did loads of PCP and went completely fucking bonkers. Allegedly. Or he didn't do anything at all, and he's just completely nuts like Mum. Uh, I think he's nuts, but not in Mum sense nuts. Because I think Mum got her nuts. Well, he's, he's, he's going that, in that direction. In that, he actually yeah. told him. <laughs> okay. So then, when he wakes up the next morning, I see him and Jocasso pull in from getting breakfast, and he got him a pack of smokes. They're friends. Yeah. Five so hours I, I goes by. He calls up Mohawk, wanting to kill him, because he goes, I was eating out some girl, and you and Jocasso were tapping your dicks against the back of my head, and I'm going to fucking kill you. Your day's coming. You, uh, don't worry, because it's going to be fucking fast, but you're going to die. He so threatened I, him over the phone. Yeah. Threatened and that, his life. Yeah, it, Mohawk got so scared <laughs> that he started up his car at my house and left. Yeah. And like, I, I, I wanted to change his, name town. From, change his name from Red Mohawk to Dead yeah. Mohawk. That's <laughs> how serious he was. He shaved his... He, he dyed his mohawk blue to he disguise did. himself. Yeah. <laughs> so, so then he, so then he goes home, tells his seven-month pregnant girlfriend that he was eating out some girl, and she's like, "What?" So I'm thinking that he That's sober, smooth, he dude. sobered up like nine hours later, and realized what he just told her, and then changed the story to, uh, "There was no girl, and I didn't eat any girl. I, I got raped by Mohawk and Jacasa." So then he goes to the fucking Avondale Police Department to prove it to his girlfriend, I believe. And he does the whole rape kit, everything, like everything. He's dead serious on it. I, like I really think that he dreamt this, and he's sticking to the story. Like he honestly thinks that it happened. And then on the way back, his he 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 thinks that his girlfriend is fucking somebody else. So he tears his entire house apart, like every last room, tearing it apart, looking for some dude that isn't even there. Then he gets into the car with his girlfriend, jumps out of a moving vehicle, tumbles to a stop, and then beats the shit out of the first person he sees. And then that's when Kevin, his dad, took him to a mental institution. Can, can I ask a couple questions to clarify things? Yeah. Because there's a lot to, to ingest here. And I've seen him go crazy before. And sometimes when people are under a great deal of stress... like Well, I'm he sure, is. He's... Like, he's Pregnant with a girl that you know, I, and he doesn't well, handle alcohol very well. And so, he doesn't seem happy. So sometimes when people are like this, life becomes like. Did you ever play Mad Libs? Yeah. You know, you fill in the, the nouns, the adjectives, the pronouns, yeah, and it creates a screw, a, a, a skewed version of reality. Sometimes you, sometimes people under a great deal of stress do that with time and events, and they create situations out of figments of what actually happened. Let me ask you this, Jacaso. What? I, without going into too much detail. What, did he eat any girl out? No, there wasn't even any girls there that were the only girls that were here were, anywhere near him. The only girls that were here were all taken. Veronica was here. Girlfriend. Allie was here. Uh, Selena was here. They're all married or have girlfriends. So there was Boyfriend. no girl. <laughs> there was no girl to be eating out with to to. I wonder. There wasn't. I thought it was. Dude, I night. thought it was fucking funny at first. I'm like, what? Kevy thinks that they were seven. What? This is insane. Like, I thought it was hysterical. Now, I'm just, like, completely upset. And I think that, like, I'm bummed out because I think he's mentally, like, yeah. insane. Day Day, his cousin, went to go see him in the mental institution. He wouldn't even hug him hello because he didn't want anybody to think that he was a faggot. How are the police treating this, treating the case? Is there an investigation? Dude, it was fucking CSI at my house two days ago. There was, <laughs> there was ten... <laughs> There was five undercover police cars here, there, and there was five state troopers here. It was fucking CSI, like with caution tape and shit. They had a search right. warrant from my house. They took the Envelopes tapes from. Shit, they took gloves. all the digital tapes from from the kitchen, and I'm and trying upstairs. to tell them there is no footage because the footage doesn't exist because it never happened. And they're like, "Well, you need to prove that." I'm like, "How am I going to prove if footage doesn't exist? Like, it's how do you prove the burden of yeah, proof? Like, no, 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 no. The burden of proof is not on you. The burden of proof uh, number one is is on the state. Okay, that that's the first thing. The the second thing Meaning is the state could pick it up, right? No, the, the state has to prove that it happened. Okay. I mean, that that's the way. Number two, you know what's a kind of upsetting about this is, um, I don't know. If, I don't know if you guys have known people involved in rape cases, 
But normally, I'm normal, sure you do. No, normal people, <laughs> normal normal people. It's not funny. Normal people who are involved in rape cases, like the police, don't get really this involved normally. And you kind of have to wonder: is it because it's it's a celebrity situation, or do they send five undercover cars and have search warrants and stuff to every person who's accused of rape? I don't know. Yeah. I, I I've never heard of this before. Well, I, I'm I'm 110 percent sure that nothing ever happens. Oh. And I mean, if they want to take my tapes, go ahead. <laughs> and you know what? They did take a tape that says Budapest on it, which I don't know why they'd want to look at a tape that says Budapest, because if that's in Hungary, in Europe, there's no reason to look at it. But if they do look at it, it's a porno of me humping my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and, and me probably shitting upside down. Well, I wish I wish all of you luck in this, and I wish the police luck with the investigation. I really hope the truth comes out. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm sure. I'm well, sure it the takes police... 45 days for the rape kit to, for the rape kit to, come, to whether they know it's the uh, truth or not. So, well, I'm sure it's very That's... complicated for the police to, to to conduct this investigation. Dude, they took they took they took the sheets from uh, both guest rooms. They took the dildo stuck to the wedding photo, <laughs> <laughs> and then when they were looking around, there's a picture of. Of you and Novak's dick with Louie in the background Act laughing, and, and and one detective was like, what's this about? I'm like, I don't know, dude. It was on a tour it's bus. two like, guys having a dick off. Yeah. Uh, you never heard of that? Right. But, like, the whole reason why they're there is apparently about two dicks. Yeah, now they're yeah. looking at a photo of two dicks. Like, it was just a terrible coincidence, but... <laughs> what, <laughs> what, that there's two dicks in one story and there's two dicks in reality? There's two dicks just about anywhere you look, there's two dudes. <laughs> I don't know. Well... Well, good good luck with this, guys. This seems awfully complex, and I I, 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 I mean maybe he's maybe he's not on drugs. Maybe he's coming off of drugs because when that, you went that, when you went to rehab, yeah. you were coming off of taking ten to twenty Xanax yeah, every day, and dude. you started feeding a flying pig. I, let me tell you how bad I got this last time. I had to go to Shepherd Pratt. I swear to God that you and Tim Glam of all people who you don't, haven't even spoke to for years. We, you know, whenever I'm filming, I fucking destroy everything, people's houses, and don't really care about it. And for some reason. I was going. I was fine for a week, and then the second week, I went. I started hearing things, seeing things. That's how long the withdrawal took. Uh, well, well, the not first being on seven it? days, I was fine, and then it got worse. And then it, it just kicked downhill. in. Yeah, and uh, so I thought you guys were about to die, get ready to destroy my house. Uh, they fucking took me to the hospital, and when I get there, I'm thinking that it, now this is gonna sound really crazy. And it can be long, so I'm gonna try to shorten it up. But. I'm thinking that you, I went to jail because I killed this head KKK leader. So now all the KKK guys are looking for me. And I'm in a mental institution. And I'm thinking that the nurses keep walking by taking pictures of me because they're going to let the inmates know I'm in there. That's what Kevy thought. He, he was looking at the TV and he thought that he was on the news about all this, about being gay or something. So he ripped the TV out of the wall. Then they put him in solitary confinement. And then he ripped the phone out of the wall. Now he's in a fucking padded room. Uh, and th he doesn't do drugs, right? That's he just a shame. does. Uh, the, dude, I don't. Whatever, yeah, whatever. I barely I, hang out with him. Yeah. I see him outside working, yeah, and I, I say what's up. But I rarely ever drink with him. But whenever I do, he's always looking for a fight. That's a shame. Uh, That's this 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 whole thing. Didn't you work at a prison? I did actually, and you know what happens is sometimes. What'd you see in there? Where was it? Um, it was at the uh the, the prison right around here, the um the the Thornton, the, the one over in Thornton, the uh, what is it, the hill? Oh, they, they, Delaware it, it, County. It, it used to be called Delaware County back oh, when man. I was when I was I was running the GED program, and um the, uh, you know it, it's interesting because some people would rather create a very negative situation so that they feel more in control than have to deal with reality. Now I'm not saying. Give me an example. Yeah. Um, an example was was um, guys who would take the GED course and would take the pretest and do very well and they'd be ready to take the GED test and, and let me guess they'd be like fuck this GED and then they rip it up into shreds in the middle of the <laughs> test it was a state test they would they would rip it up they fuck this motherfucking shit in the middle of the test they'd rip it up they walk out in front of everybody yeah so that for the for the re well there was just me and the other I was in charge of the discipline for the inmates so <laughs> Man, it was just me and the other fuck this GED dude and Why? It, but they, what did it ever do to you because well because they would rather fail the test and not take it and for the rest of their lives they Say, if they pass, think about it. If they do good on the GED, now there's more responsibilities. Now they now they could go get a good job, and it creates more responsibilities. Yeah, so they're, they're if they rip it up into that. shreds, then they don't. They already failed it, and they don't yeah. have to deal with anything. And for the rest of their yeah, life, they say, you know what? I could have had that shit. Fuck that shit, man. I don't need Who that. Who the fuck needs it? Yeah. yeah. And you know, they, they criminals rather... don't like responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> Just picture a room filled with people. They're all quiet, taking their GED. <laughs> man, fuck this GED. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, I, dude, I, I, I have worse than that. Did I ever tell you about the time there was the blackout in the prison? No. Oh, uh, you told me that. Did I tell you about? Oh, dog, this is crazy, man. It was, man. Um, it was back when they would have the the inmates 
um, they would bring them out into like a big dining hall, like in the old prison movies. And so there was a blackout. And it was, I'm in the basement. There's no windows. Now, were you I scared? I, I, well, I didn't have a security guard in there. You were scared. Just it was just it. me. Just admit it, Frank. Admit it, right? How, here's how scared I was. Because when there's, when there's a, a prison riot, what happens is the prisoners take the guards, put them in prison scrubs, and when the National Guard comes and starts shooting everyone, they push them out the door, and they're the first ones to get fucking killed, the ones who aren't, you know, brutally beat up or killed by the inmates, right? But the guards can't wear uh, guns in prison, right? It, no, but that doesn't matter because... They'll they're, stab and do all that. When the prisoners take over the fucking prison, that's it. <laughs> I mean, there, there's no other way it's going to end. The National Guard has to come and start killing everyone, sure, yeah, which is horrible. Yeah. So the first thing they start doing is taking guys like me hostage. So I'm down there with 12 inmates from two rival gangs in the same fucking room taking a GED exam. Okay? So the lights are out and there's no windows at the basement, so it's pitch black. I mean, not even a ray of fucking anything, right? And so now we hear everyone in the upstairs freaking out we hear a riot going on and we're all sitting there waiting trying to figure out what happened is there inmates downstairs with you or just other studios? i'm in the room with 12 inmates and no guard hmm. so i'm Did the first fucked? i'm the first one uh, i'm the first one they're going to take hostage so we're all listening after about five minutes we hear fighting we hear rioting so i'm like fuck this i'm like you know what i'm not going the first guy that grabs me is going to get I i'm going to hurt him real bad so I had sharpened pencils. Right. I took off my shoes. I tiptoed to into the corner of the room, and I held this, the handful of sharpened pencils in each hand like this. And <laughs> I just stood there. And as soon as I fucking started hearing footsteps towards me, I was gonna start swinging the pencils. Was it completely black? D you're, uh, yes, we were in the basement. Could no, you see this far from your face? No, no, nothing. It's it's it was so dark. It's not it's not like at you night. You could have sued. It's not at night. It's not like at night when your eyes adjust to the light of the moon. Nothing. So now... Sounds like a Bill Butler call to and, me. After about 15 minutes, finally, you could hear the guards take control of the, of the inmates, and finally the lights go on, and we're all looking around, and I'm there in the corner, with, and all the other fucking prisoners have their shoes off, and they're all fucking butted up against the walls, too. They're all waiting for the other gang to come get them. Did, did they, when the lights came on, did you still have your hand full of pencils? Yeah, and we all look at each other, and we all start laughing. I mean, there's nothing else you could do, but it was fucking tense. <laughs> we all thought we were going to go down in bloody gang warfare. It was fucking crazy. Jeez, uh, but anyway, man. back to my original point. Uh, yeah, dude, sometimes the MAs would... Sometimes people would rather... If you have a criminal mentality, you'd rather create such a negative situation that you're in control of. Why do you think police are always so stressed? Because they know that like, when they walk in on... Uh, on a domestic or something like that, people are ready to kill them because if a husband and wife are going at it with a with a knife trying to kill each other, the cop knows that they're going to get attacked going in there. You know, it's just like people would rather create the worst situation and have control rather than have to fucking sit there and talk about it. And again, I, I wish all of you luck on getting to the bottom of this. It's it's horrible that anyone's in this situation. And I hope Kevin gets better. In his, uh which obviously gave right. me a cry for help. Yeah. Uh the fans blowing on your mic, so turn okay. my way. Okay. In Franz, in your opinion, do you think that Kevy is completely out of his mind, or do you think he's covering up for his girlfriend because he told her that he ate some girl out, and he was like, no. "I didn't eat some girl out. I got raped, and I'll go to the police station to prove it." Do you think he's sticking with that story, or do you think that he really think that it happened and he dreamt it and he's yeah. nuts, or he's on PCP or what? I think he, I, I think that he, I think that he kind of. It or sounds three. to me like he kind of half dreamt it and kind of came up with a scenario and like I said dude I'm sticking to my Mad Libs theory he filled in a lot of took a lot of bits of information and in his mind he created a story which I believe he thinks is real yeah but from what Jacasa just said apparently was, he's like dead set from, on this and that's what he thinks and he's sticking to it from I what, bet every from what Jacasa just said there was no girl at the party even willing to talk to him Jacasa the Jicasso, only girl that was talking to him was Allie just to calm him down. Chikasa, right. were you alone at any time all night? Did you have not to step in? So you were, you were with, not even at one point you were alone. So you I were was with so people. frustrated with people showing up at the house at that point because it already had been such a shit show with Kevy the entire like weekend that I was like, dude, after that whole scene at the note, the last thing I wanted was to drag this night out into a party night at the house. Not to mention. So not one moment if you was were, I alone. If you were ever going to rape a dude... Why would you pick fucking Kevy, Kevy who's <laughs> a loose motherfucking cannon that would murder you without even yeah. thinking twice about it? I'm, wow. I'm too scared to even pretend to hold his hand, like to make him <laughs> pretend gay for a second. So, Jocasta, let me just get this straight, just so uh, straight my head. There wasn't one moment in the whole night 
You were alone. You were with yeah. people every second of the whole fucking night. Well, there time. you have it. That's the end of the story. You were with witnesses. You can't be two places at once. Everyone. You have a complete, a solid alibi. I mean, I the was around all night. The story doesn't make any sense, and it's a shame. They're not going to find any DNA. They're not going to find his fucking sperm in Kevy's ass. I mean, he's fine. Well, the police have a job to do, and I wish them luck, but uh, it's a shame. It is. It's a big enough thing. I mean, do you think it's uh, out of the ordinary for the police to hear a comment like, um, he's completely insane? And he is out of his mind, and he really dreamt that this happened, and he thinks it's reality. Is that, that too? Yeah. You think they've heard that before? Yeah. They've heard it because yeah. that is, dude. That is honestly what happened. Like even Boof and and Ape and Phil, and even his dad thinks that he's crazy. Well, remember the day before you guys went to the party? Uh, Boof was like, "Is he okay? He's starting that crazy." Boof saw it like well before he got out of the park. I thought it was a fucking funny joke in the beginning, and then when I see 10 CSI cars in my driveway, I'm like, what the fuck, man? It was insane. It was insane what the dude. fuck? <laughs> Horatio hanging out. When, when, you, when you take Kevy out of drink, it's like rolling the fucking dice, man. But, like, if, if all this drama happens when he drinks or does whatever, smokes weed, PCP, I don't know what he does, but wouldn't you stop doing that? If you always wind up in these situations, like, if you get drunk, and then you wind up getting in a fight, and then you wind up in jail, wouldn't you simply just stop drinking? Mm -hmm. Is it that important to keep drinking and that's wind up in these situations? That's why I don't drink hard liquor. I stick to beer because I know as soon as I have one shot, my mind doesn't... I don't know what if it's my mind or my body can't filter the alcohol. You start one, kicking in Phil's van. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> one shot, one shot drives me crazy. So I stick, breaking a little so pussy I, ass I stick finger. The beer. <laughs> uh, yeah, that and was he breaks another his pussy ass finger and complains about it for a month. I, I, I did not complain. Had, 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 I had a, one you time. broke a fucking pinky and went to the emergency room. What Pinkies don't pussy. even count. You could chop your pinky off and it still I, wouldn't I know, matter. But somebody you still right. Somebody punch. Somebody slipped me four fucking shots in a soft drink. I didn't know I was drinking. Where is that footage? Where is that Franz footage? took it and won't oh, give it over. He's trying to say that somebody put four shots in a soft drink and he didn't know that he was Franz. drinking liquor, you fucking liar. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. Fucking liar. Go take a shit and get your story together. <laughs> Wait, how did, this get, how did this turn into the anti-Franz shit? Where, where's that footage at, Franz? I have it. Where are you ever going to use the band? Yeah, but our sponsor right? backed out of the fucking, didn't pay me the goddamn money they said they were going to pay me, so I can't edit it up unless I get them to pay me the money. I'm not going to go promote their their energy drink well, if they didn't pay me? Is it because he heard you were a raving maniac that breaks your own cameras <laughs> and shit? I mean, that's a guess. I fixed that camera. That was good. <laughs> I, All right. I apologize for that. I'm, I'm going to play a song, and then we're going to talk about the Jersey Smoker. <laughs> <laughs> There's a good story that you uh, haven't heard yet, Novak. Oh, uh, really? All right, this is Riverboat Gamblers, the new one. They just played at the Note, and they fucking rock. They're from New Orleans. This is Radio Bam Series 20. Faction. Oh, faction, baby. Hi, right, guys. Now, was that? Uh, was that yeah, we're back. And uh, that was Riverboat Gamblers from New Orleans. Oh, they rock. <laughs> we know one so, person is not there, Kevy. All right, if you have, if you go to Philadelphia or any major city and you see like some dirty bum completely talking to themselves, or actually sometimes bums talk to themselves and they listen for the response and then they argue with like some invisible response. Do you think that they really think that they're talking to somebody, or maybe they really are talking to somebody, or they just want to be nuts? And and they want people to walk by to think that they're nuts. I, I mean, think they're really nuts. And they don't. Oh, ha they don't are they on something, or are they just no, fucked? They just don't have the insurance or what it takes to go get the right medication to make them yeah, no, normal. I, I think they see things. You know, I think there's just someone there with them. Yeah, it, it could be that, but it's also it could be habitual. In other words, it just could be they've done it so many times that that's and they're very lonely, so they do have conversations with themselves and pretend. I talk to myself all the time, but they actually ask questions and wait for the answer, and then they argue about why they think that the answer that they heard that nobody was talking was wrong. <laughs> do, do you do, do you guys talk to yourselves when you're walking around the house doing your normal stuff? How you do. do that? I, I do. do. That. I do that. You do. Uh, One, two, yeah, three, I don't know. four, I do. five. Yeah. Isn't it embarrassing? When like you're doing it and then you realize someone's listening and then you have to act like you're singing a song, <laughs> like as if there's really a song called "Fuck That Fucking Bitch, I Hate Her." How about how about when we're at how about when we're at the uh, haunted Pumpkin Halloween? The yeah, we're, we're at the haunted hayride and Franz is in the woods taking a time lapse of the hayride and and there's this guy just sitting there waiting for the next hayride to come by and he's in like a scary outfit and he's he has like 15 minutes to kill and he doesn't think that anybody's around him and he's just sitting there and he just Franz just hears. <clears throat> Cock the magic dragon and makes your cock come true. And then he turns around and he sees Franz like, Whoa, man, how, how long were you standing there? <laughs> like, long enough to hear you say cock the magic dragon 
Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that the same dude who said, haven't, haven't you ever shit in the woods before and had to wipe your ass with your sock? Yeah, he was, he was like, you know, how, like, you know, you had to, because he's talking about him being in the woods all day drinking beer waiting for the, waiting for the hayride to come <laughs> to try and scare everyone. So he's like, yeah, you know, like, one of the worst things is having to take a shit. I'm like, what do you have, toilet paper? He's like, nah, I usually hold it in, but sometimes you go, you know, how when you got really got to go and then you take your sock and then you wipe your ass with your sock and you got to walk all around all day with one sock. I'm like, no, actually, I've never done it because you haven't. And you haven't lived. <laughs> <laughs> and you haven't lived. I felt so lame. What? You never wiped your ass with your sock in the wood? <laughs> and you haven't lived. <laughs> I actually felt lame for like five minutes for not having had that experience. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, yeah. I shit my pants an hour and a half away from my house today, man. It today? Was, yeah, <gasps> it was the worst. Are you still wearing the same pants? No, I went home. Change. What pants were they? They're probably mine. No, they were jeans. Why? Where and why? Why did you shit yourself? Cause I thought I had to fart really bad. Aww. And you don't wear boxers either. Nope. <laughs> Novak, what's what's the worst? What's the dirtiest your like underwear and stuff ever was as a homeless drug addict on the streets of Baltimore? Like, did, were you ever walking around with full shit? Put it this way: when I would take my socks off, they would literally stand up by themselves. <laughs> So that can kind of they were just how. stiff from like sweat and just, athlete's foot. Yeah, so stiff that they would. I swear to God, if I'm lying, kill me now. They would stand up on their shelves. Dude, you are minging, dude. Plus, look at his hair, Chikatsu. Smell his hair. Tell me what it smells like. And dodge just the dandruff. Just wash it last night. Dodge the dandruff. Wash it last night. Put a Did little wax it? in there, but. Uh, yeah, I mean. <coughs> what about the dandruff? Is it still in there? <laughs> you smell it. I washed it. It, it was all it's feathers. not bad. Wow, you did wash it. I'll be honest it. with you. Yeah, it's because, not pleasant. Because it's I not pleasant. I haven't washed it but for like not bad. four months, and it was I was sweating, and it was fucking itchy, and I'm like, oh, enough's enough. Remember so, Han? Franz, speaking of enough's enough, uh, when you wanted to get rid of the Jersey smoker and she wasn't getting the hint, you took her to a strip club, and then what happened? Well, well, let me let me just preface the story by <laughs> saying that uh, I the smoker from Jersey was really cool. I, when was I this real fast? Out, this is like four years ago. Okay. And I, I you know, I mean, we had we had a lot of rough times. When we were going out, but she's she's really cool. Oh, I, fuck I you, Franz. <laughs> but you know, she, I didn't smoke, I didn't smoke. You know, let me just say that we were both we both uh, <laughs> were into consuming a lot of alcohol at the time, and there was there was a lot of just negativity all around. So. Uh, at one point, I was, you know, <laughs> Did she, you she was, she was, she was, she was not the most diligent worker. Like when she started living at my house, I was she just, wasn't diligent as shit. <laughs> so, so I. I was like, look, I was like, uh, what did you do all day, babe? You know, like, I know you didn't go to work because you only have a I was sitting time. around waiting for forensic files to come on. Well, that doesn't come on for three hours. What have you done in the past five? Yeah, I was like... Sat in bed waiting for forensic files to come on. Wait, is, is this Novak or the smoker from Jersey? <laughs> she sounds like Novak. Oh, fuck you, fraud. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, fraud. So she was she sitting in bed boys. all day waiting for forensic files to come on. It's like, no, that's called watching television all day. That's not waiting, like... Ew, man. That's not called waiting for a show. Waiting for a show something you do 15 minutes prior to the show like you, you sat and watched television all this i don't know so like one time i just was like you know what i was like she's not even gonna clean up in the house like i'm hard at work all day i was like i was like look i was like you you're in charge of sweeping the floor and then i just decided i was not gonna sweep the floor six months goes by there's fucking a blanket of cat look i got a shag carpet there's so much fucking cat hair all over the floor i was like this isn't gonna work out I was like, she quit. I let her live here for free. She quit both her fucking jobs. She sits around watching television all day. I was like, smoked is, in your house? Yeah, yeah. This, I was like, dude, this relationship is smoked just under the table. This, Can't this, even get a drag around here. Every day she got a serious important meeting. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, and I couldn't, I couldn't, ta I couldn't go out with her too much because the drinking was so bad. Fucking everything and you know, luckily she's, too. she's fine now. Uh, she's fine now, but she, you know, there was a lot of so anyway. Fucked up and so I, I wanted emotion. her. I wanted her to leave, but I didn't have the heart to kick her out of the house. So I was like, well, maybe if I just start ignoring her, and that didn't help because you just watch more television. And then finally one night, we we came back from a party, and I was like, dude, I gotta get rid of this girl. She's so drunk and belligerent. Like she was mean to all my friends. She kicked Rab himself in the balls. She's not even like, <laughs> she's just she almost got thrown out of the club four times. She's starting uh, fights with my friends. I was like, I just gotta ditch this girl. So I take her to. I decide to take the mean guy approach, which I've not. I've never done. I've never done that or had to do it before or since. But so you did I did it with me a million times. Uh, well, <laughs> you're my other girlfriend. So I take her to a strip joint, and we're watching a stripper. She always wanted to go to a strip joint with me, and I would never take her. So finally, I was, all right, I'm going to take you to a strip joint. 
So I'm, I'm like, wow, this girl's hot. Can you do that? She's like, oh, yeah, I could do that. I'm like, cool, why don't I take you home and you give me a little show? She's like, okay. No, didn't you spend 30 minutes being like, man, that girl's fucking hot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, look at the moves on her. Can, <laughs> can you do that? <laughs> don't yeah. hurt yourself, babe. Yeah, well, so we, we, we get to my house. <laughs> don't hurt, hey, babe! Don't hurt yourself, babe. We get to my house <laughs> and she's about to put on this... She's about to put on this this nudie show for me, and she she put in the, she puts the CD in. She has like four inch heels on. Yeah, she has four inch fucking heels on. She had all she had all these crazy boots and nurses outfits with, uh, that I bought her. That uh, yeah, you I probably like that out. sick shit, yeah, Brian. I did. So uh, so she t and I yeah, and I have miles of tree. videotape to prove it. Uh, no, um, so she she gra <laughs> So she starts dancing, but the, the song isn't going on. The, the CD player is broken or something. It's not playing. So finally, I was smoking a cigar, and I'm like, you know what, babe? Don't bother. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> don't, goes, don't even bother. You. Next thing, dude, right I feel... Face. No, no. I just see stars, and I look, and then I see the second kick of these... These clog, these big stripper boots just coming right up ahead. I'm like, oh shit! I'm like, oh, you know, all right, it's cool, it's cool. I'm, I'm gonna take you to your parents' house. Like, Fuck you, you motherfucker! <laughs> you love to humiliate me. Now, now this is a, now this is her. right in dead South Philly where everybody can hear it. Everybody knows the, everybody's business. So the windows are open. It's summertime, and all the entire neighbors can hear is get the fuck off of me. I'm like, babe, I'm gonna take you to sister's house. I'll take you to parents. Don't worry, don't worry. She's like, Fuck you, motherfucker! Get the fuck off me! Get the fuck off me! Get the fuck off! And she's not getting tired. She's getting more amped up. Fifteen minutes of this shit, I'm like, I gotta do something. So I grab her phone and start searching through for fucking numbers. And she takes my video camera, smash five grand gone. <laughs> she starts smashing shit in my house. I'm like, all right. And then she goes, don't worry, cause your bedroom's next. Yeah, now I have nice ass. I have nice ass. Don't antiques. worry, I am worried if my bedroom's next. Dude, I have fucking, I have like a chest from the Civil War up there, dude, with a mirror still intact from the fucking Civil War. Like dude. real Civil War shit. Yeah, like nice ass <laughs> antique shit up oh, there. Dude. So, <laughs> so she's kicking holes in drywall yeah, all the way up. I'm like, stop me. So I, I've never, I, I, France men do not lay a hand on a woman in a violent France manner. Man. But this time, I had to grab her and tackle her and put her in a fucking arm lock and call her sister. <laughs> no, he goes. No, you said. <laughs> if I just punch her in the back of the neck, maybe I'll just knock her out. She'll <laughs> shut the fuck up and go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know what? Jesus. I f I, I, Fucking well, Jeff. Yeah, dude, don't worry, Jeff dude. I, I've right never here. hit a girl ever, and I never will ever again. But, dude, Jen drove me so crazy really? in Finland that, like, she was pressing my buttons, and she knew that she was, and she was loving it. Yeah. And I got so goddamn frustrated, and I drank way too much that I fucking... Punched her right in the face and gave her a black eye. She's, she's done way worse to you. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> she almost broke my neck. And then when I thought she was going to help, I I look up. I'm like, oh, she's must going to help me over this. You know, even though we were arguing. She goes, fuck you. And then throws a glass at me. And it smashes like two inches from my face. Didn't she push you in the, next to the pool? Where that yeah, I almost broke was my fucking neck. That's what I'm talking the about. concrete. <laughs> well, yeah. So anyway, I, her sister had to come and get her. And it was really, it was such Wait, a Wait, did you ever end up making contact with her? Uh, yeah. Well, I, I basically, I took my fist and I pushed in the back like I pushed her with my fist pushed her down hope and she's getting up she's like your bedroom's next I'm like no I just want you to stop it's been 45 minutes you wrecked everything in the house just stop so I'm, I'm like, gonna go pop your waterbed pussy so, yeah so I call I call fucking asshole Adam Wallacavage oh, going down the I call fucking douchebag Adam Wallacavage I'm like Adam please dude I need an intervention she's drunk she's she pops his waterbed I, I don't have a waterbed <laughs> I don't have a waterbed so so I'm like Adam please I'm like listen I'm not no more way. I need you to come over here his bed and everything I'm like Adam we've been friends since we were 12 years old I'm like Adam I need you to come over here and have a fucking alcohol intervention right now please Adam I'm begging you please your friend i've never asked you for anything i've done so so many big favors for you so what does adam do he goes he goes ah oh, just sleep it off you'll be fine just go fuck her and hangs up on him. basically he's too lazy to help out yeah, his best friend yeah, yeah. he, he lives two, like eight whole blocks away he could easily help not even he lives a fucking three minute walk from my house that lazy fucking son of a bitch that guy sounds about as worthless as uh and then your you know old what? camera assistant what uh, the fuck was that idiot's uh -huh. name takes good photos though yeah no i know he does that <laughs> but what was that idiot's name who did nothing and ate all the food cabin all that be Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh. God. So anyway, so, <laughs> he dead yet? Uh, no, he works at a he works at a Trader Joe's and has a beer website. Sweet. Oh, that's sweet. So now my question is: so she would lay in your bed and wait four hours for whatever show she liked, 
What, she smoke in your bedroom? No, 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 no. Not four hours. Or however She'd long. wake up, turn on the television, and wait for Forensic Files but, to come on, which come on, <laughs> came on at 10.30. Forensic at Files. Night. But now I know you hate cigarette smoke, so would she lay in your bed and just smoke nonstop? Actually... She didn't smoke in the house. That's one thing I'll give to her. That's she amazing. That's a bold faced lie. Yeah. No, no, I didn't. You know she snuck a few here and there. I let people, when there's company, I let people smoke in that front. How room. could her name be the Jersey smoker and she's not going to smoke in your house because while you're out at work and she knows damn well that you're not going to be back <laughs> because, in five hours? She's definitely smoking in your room. Because I could smell number one and number two. They called her a smoker from Jersey because there were cigarette burn holes in her underwear. Ew! <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> no, I'm only kidding. Chat said <laughs> cigarette burns in her fucking Did you get that photo <laughs> that I emailed you? The only you time her? I burn holes in my pants is when I'm. I'm intoxicated and I fall asleep with a cigarette in my, in my hand. So she just does it because she smokes so much she forgets which one she put out and not. But, but as far as I know, she hasn't had a drink in like four, fucking four years and I think that's awesome. That like, is great. Really, dude. Cheers I, to I the smoker. I couldn't do that. Yeah. I now, is, is she still cigarettes. smoking? I'm sure she's still smoking, but at least she's not drinking. Mm. From, from, from oh, yeah, well, can't, drinking doesn't smoke cancer though. It causes cancer. And you know what pissed me off, dude? Is, is fucking Walla Cabbage calls me up like, like, Six months ago, he goes, "You know what, dude? You owe your ex-girlfriend a fucking apology." I'm like, "What, Adam? What are you talking about?" He's like, "You heard me. You know, I've been hanging out with her all the time, and uh, you know what? She's an awesome person, and you treated her like shit." I'm like, "You know what? We both treated each other like shit, and that's why we're not together." Number one, number two, it's none of your fucking business, dude. Right. Why don't you look in your own backyard? You got one wife that left you, and you got another one that just broke off your fucking engagement one day after the goddamn engagement party. What? Why don't you look in your own fucking yeah. backyard? I was like, you're off my friends list, buddy. I was like, you're the fuck <laughs> you think you are. You're off. And actually, you have a friends list? We made up. What hey, number am I? Yeah, who's your friends list? Break it down. What Top number's five. my back? Top five. Let's face it. Would you be friends with me? Top I'm lucky five. I have anybody on there. Top five. <laughs> who's the first person you call when you need to talk to somebody? Phil? Uh, my mom, actually. Okay, number two? Phil. Uh, um, I, yeah, actually, I talked to Phil. Number like, three? Um, who do I go for for advice? Uh, Chicasso, have I ever come to you for advice? What, gay advice? Uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah, you, you, told, get, you yeah. said me and Hannah Street, we had that big argument uh, in the Big Well, you said something wonderful the other day. You said that I'm like, oh, you're wonderful. big. Wonderful. <laughs> you've been you hanging said, out the flavor too like, much. You said I'm like your big little brother. Yeah, it's true. And it, it it's really true. touched I th me. I think, no, back, I think of you as my little brother. It's, uh, weird, it's weird enough. Oh, so that, that makes us bros, too. So I'm in the top five? I, don't, I hate you. You didn't. Oh, that's fucked up. Oh, I thought you were I don't want the show to get I'm all doing emo, a Zandy dude. bar over all this, dude. <laughs> this isn't the emo show. He left show. you out of this. Dude, how did episode. I make it and you didn't, dude? That mm. is fucked up. Hurt. I love you all. I can't. Oh, now he's going to suck everyone's dick. See? Okay, that's the no back. Yeah, who else you, who else you love in this room? Gee, I, I said you're like a little He brother. probably loves you, Bobby, and he just met we you two seconds talks. ago. I think we're all brothers here. Yeah. We had some bromance. Sisters. Couple times. Bromance. Yes. Franz, how many Frenchmen does it take to change the light bulb? Oh, God. Uh, it takes two. One to change the bulb, and one to forget to put on his deodorant and stink it up. <laughs> how many Germans does it take to change the light bulb? Uh, I can't say that one on the radio. <laughs> but uh, I know how many Russians it takes. How many? It how takes, many? It takes two. One to change the bulb, and one to prostitute his wife. <laughs> <laughs> all right. How many lesbians does it take to change the light bulb? It takes three. Want to change the ball too to make a documentary about it? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Last but final least, your best one. My, my best one is, well, Chicasso is a pretty cheap guy. Chicasso is a cheap guy. As a matter of fact, if you want to see what George Washington looked like when he was drunk, just look in the bottom of his wallet. Oh! No, I'm only kidding, but he's just good with saving money. As a matter of fact, if you, uh, you look at his mattress, you'll find that there's so many 50s in there that they'll have to call Grant's tomb. Thank Grant's you. tomb. Thank you. Grant's tomb. <laughs> wow. Boo, what about G? Boo, boo. What about G? Yeah, what well, G? No, G's an awesome guy. Like I said, he's my little brother. Stop sucking his dick. Well, tell him how you feel. Well, he's gained a little <laughs> weight in the past six months. As a matter of fact, on the way over here, uh, I told him to haul ass, and it took him two trips. Took him two trips. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Dick Van Dyke. And, and for those of you who enjoy my stand up, you'll see a lot more oh, on, on the Ming Hag's Dream oh, Seller Tour Buster. to come. We have two Ming Hag Dream Seller Tours coming up. I can't release the dates yet, but we are very close, ladies and gentlemen. Aren't we going to Finland and England? Yeah, we Finland are. Finland and England? No, we're going Finland. to Finland. Uh, we're still trying to get, get England together, but I can't release that info yet. But guys, <laughs> guys, keep your eye on the webs. BamRajara.com, BamRajara, MySpace, Ming Hag's MySpace, etc. Uh, since you're uh, plugging everything like a faggot, I have a book signing this Saturday at Barnes Nobles downtown Baltimore. Oh. Now, now, exactly where is this place? Because I'm supposed to go, and I'm scared that like you're unable to tell me the address. Uh, Which one is it? It's at the Hard Rock. It's, okay, you know where my mom was, right? <laughs> See, <now I> <laughs> you can walk right across the street. It's right where the right where we walked all around with um with the. Uh, 
But you can talk about this off yeah, air. I'm, play, yeah. I'm playing him. Yeah. Yeah. Listeners, so you got that? It's, it's him, track like, five, beautiful remix. Listeners, Here we go. It's the, Just yeah, shut, yeah, shut the fuck up. Just shut the fuck up. Just shut the fuck up. Play it. Radio 28. Radio Man. We're going hot right now. Oh, oh, stop. Run for your life. Look what we found in Don Vito's ass. This is Radio Bam, baby. Faction. Oh, yeah, we're back. That was him. That's Remix, great. beautiful. Uh, oh. I'm here with Maddie J, Joe Franz, Shit Goose, Jacasso, and Novak. It's and uh, Franz. Yes, sir. Now, you have a neighbor who's a carpenter. Oh. <laughs> and what did you just hear? Well, <laughs> as you know, in South Philadelphia, the walls are very thin. And he's a very skilled carpenter and an awesome guy. But Stop he, sucking his dick. Oh. <laughs> so he's building something in his basement. So you're hearing sawing. You're hearing... You know, you're hearing the drill, you're hearing the grinder, you're hearing the sander, you're hearing hammering all day, and he's whistling. Doo, 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 doo. Doo, 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 doo. Oh, and I'm yeah. working in my basement, I can hear him in his oh, basement. Oh, fucking awesome. And I can hear him, I can hear this him is finish. fucking awesome. I can hear him finish, <laughs> at, like, at 8 o'clock at night. He's like, woo! All right. <laughs> he's, showing, he's showing his wife, he's like, yeah, he's like, woo! And right. you can hear everything Man. plain as day. Yeah, yeah, because it's, it's in a basement, like, the walls are thin. So you can hear him pop a beer, sipping the beer, looking at his work, it's like, oh, yeah! Oh man, all right, now to take it upstairs. Woo! And you hear him walking it upstairs. <laughs> yeah. Boom. Uh, boom. Uh, all the way up the stairs, and then you hear. Uh, 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 fuck! <laughs> fuck! Fuck, 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 fuck! <laughs> fuck! And I, I, I'm like, what is wrong? I go, I go over there to find out what the fuck is going on because he seems I've never heard him like that. He's so upset. Apparently, he failed to measure the, fuck, the, fuck, the, fuck. The, turning, the turning point of the doorway between his Masonic cabinets and had built this monster shelf, the most beautiful shelf you've ever and seen. And it was so solid, and he built the whole thing to the point where, like, you can't take it apart. Uh, like, it was already built solid. Uh, like, you can't undo it, what you just did. He couldn't get it up the stairs. <laughs> it was too fucking big. So, he didn't do the proper measurements at all. No, and, and it was too big to get to take the whole fucking thing apart again and redo it upstairs. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Fuck, 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 fuck! The most beautiful cabinet you've ever fucking seen. It was like, the best part is, he was so extremely happy ten minutes before. <laughs> like, woo! Brought all right! Brought his wife yeah! And look at it. Hey, babe! Uh -huh. Go check this out! <laughs> I built this with my bare hands! I built this shit with my bare hands! <laughs> woo! Party! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuck, fuck, fuck! Oh, yeah. <laughs> How old is this guy, Fra? Uh, he's, he's in his mid-40s. France? Uh, it, was, it, was so, it was so sad. It was, oh, but, what but wonderful it was, neighborhood. Then again, it was, it was very entertaining. <laughs> Your walls are that thin, really? I mean, you can, it's weird. It's, like you can, they're not, it's not that they're thin, but you hear, like, there's gaps in the brick. You just the, eavesdrop. You can hear an echo. Yeah, I just eavesdrop. Thank mm. you, Novak. So, uh, Novak, did, <laughs> did you hear about my uh, overdose? Uh, bits and pieces. I had an alleged overdose. This is what I heard. I, oh, you, yeah, you, I heard about that. You basically, you what, what did you I hear? I heard that on I the heard TMJ. that you ate 12, uh, 12 <laughs> over-the-counter pussy-ass <laughs> sleep meds, which wouldn't do anything to you. No. Nah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, so... I was arguing with Missy. We're friends now. Okay, yeah. She's right next to me. Uh, she was on the call the ambulance, uh, right? This, this is what happened. I went on a four-day bender to forget about it, so I was drinking nothing but, like, Jack Daniels and maybe vodka and Gatorade. And uh, I didn't eat for four days straight, and all I was doing was taking Adderall and drinking whiskey. And my body was so dehydrated that it just completely shut down. I had an irregular heartbeat and everything, and then Missy wouldn't call me back. So I threatened that I'm going to swallow this Ambience. entire bottle of Ambien, okay, which was like 12 of them. Yeah. But I only took three, but I said to her that I took 12. So she didn't even call me back. She just called a fucking ambulance. Now Seth comes up, knocks on the door, says that there's an ambulance coming. I'm like, Jesus Christ. So then I go barf up the three pills that I already took. And then by the time they got there, I was trying to convince them that I was fine. But they didn't think that I was fine. I was like, dude, all I need is sleep. I haven't gotten much sleep. I've been on a four-day bender. I've been drinking nothing but whiskey. I haven't eaten a goddamn thing. And I've been taking Adderall as well. So... That's probably took you. So they're like, well, what about this 12 Ambien? I'm like, that's what I told Missy to get her fucking attention. I didn't take the 12 Ambien. You took three. So, yeah, but then I, th then I barfed it up. Well, yeah. yeah, it kicked in, but I barfed it all up. And then, so they said that I had an irregular heartbeat. I go to the hospital. They do all these tests. They kept me there. They said I was be there for five hours. I was there for two fucking days. They gave me saline. They flushed out my entire system. They said that I was, uh, they gave me saline for 10 hours straight, and I didn't even piss yet, which is like... 
Wow. Not Completely, good. yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, was, my body needed the water so bad. There was another problem they found your mom told me about. I don't even know if you're aware of it. Apparently, when you don't drink enough water and you do all that crazy shit you were doing on the Nitro Circus, um, your muscle, one of your muscle fibers deteriorated enough where it separated and got in your bloodstream. Right, they're taking and, water from the muscles. Yeah, the and, and, and had Missy not called the ambulance and had you not gone to the hospital, that muscle fiber may have gotten caught in your really? heart, my, my young friends. High five for saving my life partner, baby. Nice you got a job, great wife. <laughs> number one, number two, you guys know that that's really not the healthiest way for you to get your wife's attention now. You do know that. I was on booze, Franz. That's I no, know. You don't think right. Uh, you're I, still I responsible for your actions even when you drink. But that's what I, I... That was my plan before I even started drinking. I was like, I'm going on a four-day bender and all you guys are doing the same with me. So we... Went on a four day bender. I got the fuck the out of The next time you want to get your wife's attention, try roses. Because yeah. meanwhile, the world is. Hey, no wonder you're single and lonely and you're going to die as a little man. What the fuck? <laughs> Go give a fucking homeless kid advice. Relationship advice. <laughs> Let him get worse. <laughs> dude. Even dude, I that shit spread. That. That, that, dude, they thought you over to. I mean, it was on television. It was on the TMZ, dude. Well, and his mom saw that well, shit. Well, you know, they call Ape because all the radio shows have her number or whatever. I don't know. But they call her up asking for advice. They And everybody thinks that she's like a. Uh, the, um, They're covering it up. Like yeah, what do you call it? Oh, I can't think of the word right now. Your alibi? No, no, no. Um, over. No. I can't think of the fucking in word. In denial? In denial. <clears throat> Thank oh, you, shit goose. Oh, okay. Yeah, At least they're like, didn't answer, it sounds though. like Ape in the Nile. That she says, like, yeah, he was on a bender, and then he took one Ambien. One Ambien. <laughs> <laughs> they thought I took 12. Wow. Jesus Christ, if I was here, I'd have been interrogated for hours on that one. Did you see that? It's all Oof. Perez and TMZ and stuff. Yeah. How does TMZ get their information? I wonder yeah. who called them and told them that. Somebody from that. Dude, they, 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 could, they could write whatever they want, because all they do is say... Sources say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sources say that Margera took 20 Ambien. Yeah. But that's sue. not true, though. I, it wasn't 20, it was 12. Well, sources say. <laughs> can, can, you, can you sue over that? Well, no, they can't reveal their sources. Can't do anything. Yeah, yeah. Sources said. A good journalist can't reveal his sources, Novak. Sources. <laughs> sources. Sources, sources say. Sources. Well, yeah, ever, so. since, ever since my hospital stunt, I haven't drank since. So All right! Eight whole days! Woo! Woo! Let's go out and drink and celebrate. No. Yeah, you no, owe, we you, will not. You owe yourself a fucking... This is cause to celebrate. Beers all yeah. around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's get some Jack and Crown Roll while we're at it. Um, <laughs> but you're Bacca tearing up. Fruit, shot of Crown. Nah, I'm, skating, I'm seeing anymore. a lot more skating out of you, which is exciting for me. See? Because that saline made my muscles feel better. Dude, dude they were so tight. Water is pretty cool. Dude, dude. my muscles were so <laughs> tight that I actually was stretching before going skating, and I stretched one inch too far, and my whole fucking hamstring popped out. Like an old rubber band. Mm-hmm. And then, so what? The next That's what they said. They said yeah. that my muscles were, like, dry rotted. Like when it starts getting all, like, yeah, just flat. So the next day when you came to, you said, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm out of here. Uh, Pablo Picasso just joined us. Uh, the Colombians. I mean, uh, the Colombians uh, here. No, who's the big drug lord? Um, Juan Pablo Escobar. Pablo yeah. Escobar. Pablo Escobar in the house. But then they <laughs> said the next day when you woke up, you decided you were going on CKY tour for a while. Is that what you did? Yeah, I went. I went to Arizona to try to forget about shit, but um, I sobered up real fast and everything hit me like a brick wall. So I hopped on the first <laughs> flight back the next day. I did shit like that. Plus, it was hot as fuck there. Like even at nighttime, like it it's was like, unbearably oh, hot. Yeah, it's Where in Arizona? Fun. Yeah, oh, it's, it's fucking terrible. Hot. It's, it's I don't know how people live there. Like. They, they, they say, like, fast. nobody even goes outside in the daytime. They just try to no. find air conditioning. It's like 115. It was in, insanity. Like, I wanted to leave instantly. How, how did they live there before air conditioning? That's what I would have fucked <laughs> Ask the Indians, homo. <laughs> okay, I will. Or, All right, well, then go do it. Well, maybe I will. All right, I will. Or Bin Laden says you swear you know where he lives. Chinese mountains. Northern. <laughs> I want to look this up on Wait, the internet. Wait, didn't, didn't they find, like, Bin Laden's son and killed him? <laughs> Did they? Didn't they hear found, about they it. They found one of those guys' son. Right, isn't that right? Sources said. <laughs> Sources say. Uh, wait, what's that thing where the senators and those rabbis were involved with all those? In Jersey? I, don't, I heard something real quick about it on the way over here. What was that? Ask the smoker from Jersey. <laughs> what, what happened She's there, probably Jake? bargaining with a car uh, and just smokes for some sand dick. Going on explain, Jersey. explain this political situation, G. The fans want to know. <sighs> I can't. It's too much <laughs> to talk about right fans now. Wanna know, <laughs> fans want to know. I don't think they'll care about that mayors from Secaucus and Hoboken got busted in like, a gambling like extortion scheme in Jersey. You don't think they'll care about that? There's like seven calls <laughs> lighting up right now it's, about that, dude. <laughs> That's like, they're loving this. Hey, are there any calls? Well, it's we have one minute left, idiot. should have said that earlier. 
I like, I like the Dude, get like smarter, calls, man. I'm a big fan of the yeah, call. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm, I listen to your show all the time. Hello, caller. Uh, what's yeah, your question? Hi. Hi. Hello. What's, what's your question? What's your name, caller? Is this, is this Are we Pam? talking to somebody? What the fuck yeah, is your got, question, kid? Is, is, hi, this, <laughs> is this Pam? What's your question, kid? Uh, hi. I have all your... Viva the fans. I'm, I, 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 <sighs> and I enjoyed What's this, your question, kid? I enjoyed the rape story today. <laughs> I learned a lot of, about this kind of a thing. Allegedly. Alleged. And sources say <laughs> that this is the end of the show. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Later. <laughs> I love you. Did it work? Pussy Bats track two. Cool. They're from Germany. Thank you, caller. This is a demo. It's to deal with it. Send Radio Bam series twenty eight. Everyone have a safe time. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> That's Radio Bam for this week. We're done. done. Tune in next week for more. You can leave now. It's Radio Bam. Radio Bam every Monday. Radio Bam every Monday, seven Eastern, four Pacific. Email me now at Radio Bam. Why don't you uh, take a picture of your sweet white ass and send it on over to Radio Bam at Sirius-Radio.com. Call Radio Bam at eight seven seven Porn Bag. That's eight seven seven Porn Bag. Sweet dreams, Peapod. Bye, everybody. See you next week. Faction. Bye. <laughs>